Welcome, this is Cheryl from Wadi's Art, and today we're going to look at the start to finish illustration in Krita and chat a little bit about my process. This is a condensed version of a two hour live stream. First off, this was painted as the illustration for a LARP item card for some gloves that the character I play wears. They're directly being based on the pair of gloves you see in the reference pictures, which are the gloves I wear when I'm playing. Speaking of the reference photos, the hands you see are actually mine. I took a quick reference photo using my phone and cut out my hands. If you've never used Krita before, it has a fantastic reference image tool that lets you add images to the canvas and position them wherever you need them that are not part of the final exported image. I use Krita for nearly all my digital painting. I have other programs, including Photoshop, but I love a lot of the features Krita has and how the brushes feel. Other things in Krita just work more smoothly for me, like adjusting brushes on the fly. Also, I'm a big supporter of open source software, which Krita is. For sketching, I'm just using a very basic pencil brush. It really does not matter which pencil brush you use for this because it's going to get painted over. This is just one that I happen to like the feel of. I start by blocking in the basic shapes of my hands and then refining the shape as I go. You'll also see that I use a lot of contour lines. For me, they're very helpful in visualizing what I'm painting as a three-dimensional form. If this is something you struggle with too, I really recommend using contour lines. Since I started using contour lines, my painting has drastically improved because I can now see where shadows should be falling. Now I'm working on sketching out the second hand, and I drew it separately from the first, just so the lines from the first one weren't distracting me. Working digitally makes this so much easier, but even when I'm working in traditional media, I'm usually making multiple rougher sketches and tracing them onto clean paper with a light box for the final painting or inking. When you do that, you can also cut up and move parts of your sketches around as well. I do that all the time. It's just much easier in digital. Once the rougher sketch is done, I turn down the opacity on it and add a new layer for the final sketch. For this, I use a smoother brush. And this is where I try to make my lines fairly clean and add details like the fingernails and wrinkles on the knuckles. While this is also going to be completely painted over, having the details there makes, again, shading things in much easier.
The gloves are very easy to sketch out, since they just follow the contours of the hands, which is why for a piece like this, having the anatomy right before adding anything else is very important. Finally, on to adding color. Mostly I'm using this big fill brush, which is great for doing color flats like this. You just follow the outlines and it fills everything in. The only place I used a regular brush was at the ends of the wrist to give it a painterly edge.
Moving on to shading this in now, since I have reference photos taken in pretty good lighting, I am color picking from them to start. I frequently do this for my initial color and then modify it as I go. Photos are great for reference, but often the color or light can be a little boring. So trying to follow them exactly can lead to very bland paintings. This is especially true of art that isn't portraying reality, whether that's fantasy, sci-fi, horror, superheroes, etc. This is a pretty simple painting. I was able to finish it in two hours, but it still is a vampire's hand, so I did want to push the colors a little bit, as you'll see later. If you're curious about the brush I'm using for shading, there is a default textured brush. Um, can't off the top of my head remember what it's called, but it's in the default Krita set. And I have taken that brush tip, which I really like, and applied it to other brushes, to color smudge brushes, and to smudge brushes with no color added. There are a bunch of brushes that I like. These are the brushes that, honestly, I just keep reaching for. They have a great texture. They look really nice. They give a nice painterly look to my pieces. So you can see the collection of brushes in the corner there. And those are all the default brushes that I enjoy. I have added a couple recently of the RGBA brushes that mimic oil painting with texture. And I hope to have a video out soon where I play with some of those brushes and show you what they can do. When it comes to brushes, it honestly doesn't matter which ones you use as long as you like the effect and you're comfortable using them. So play with brushes, find the ones that really feel right to you. There's no right or wrong answer when it comes to the brushes you use.
Now, for those of you geeky enough to wonder about these gloves, I play Vampire the Masquerade as part of the One World by Night LARP network. And my Bruja anti tribute Avery wears these gloves. They start out as just regular leather gloves that I wore as part of my costume, and over time, I had other player characters add things to the gloves to give them a little bit more oomph. I've had them as an item since the very first game I played as Avery, and so I'm a little sentimental about them, and I thought it would be fun to make an illustrated item card for them. They aren't powerful or anything, just an extra point or two of damage depending on what type of creature she's punching. But I like them, and they look cool when I'm wearing the real gloves. If you've never played Vampire the Masquerade, it's a great game, especially if you love horror or vampires or anything like that. There are several editions. I play the LARP rules because I play on a LARP org. If I'm playing tabletop, I prefer the 20th anniversary edition, but there are several editions, including the current one with this fifth edition. I'm not fond of it, but plenty of people do enjoy it. I don't judge what edition of a game you enjoy. If you are curious about LARP, Look up One More By Night. I love playing in the org so much that I volunteer to help promote the org as their marketing coordinator. Right here is where I do something I add to nearly all the skin tones I paint. I use a hue shift brush, which is a feature in Krita, that adds random color brush strokes within a color range based on my foreground color. I have set it to a very narrow range so that it only goes a little bit cooler and a little bit warmer than my foreground color. Since this is an undead skin tone, it shades with blues and purples. For a live person, it would be more peach and orange and red tones. Then I set this layer to color blend mode and drop the opacity way down. This helps add just a little bit more variation to the skin. I hope you enjoyed this video. I don't really do many videos where I discuss my process. If you did enjoy it, do the whole like and subscribe thing. Thank you for watching.